Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Refactoring UI. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at a submission from Jonathan Hillis. Jonathan is the marketing director at WeSpeakStudent.com, which is a program that provides health benefits to students across Canada. And he wanted help with the plan details page that lists all of the coverage options available to the students. So we're gonna see what we can do to clean this up and make it look more professional. So let's get right into it. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is the scroll jacking on this page. Scroll jacking is when a site manipulates the scroll bar to behave differently, in this case using fixed scroll points. Now, scroll jacking is a bit of a controversial subject, and although it might work nicely on a marketing page as it introduces a cool factor, it's not really practical on a page like this, so we're going to remove that. Additionally, the fixed scroll points on this take you to each section within the plan details. In the current design, you can either scroll to each section or use the tabs at the top of each page. This can be a bit jarring and unexpected, mainly because the tabs would usually toggle the view. This interaction is also creating this awkward scroll bar within the table because it has a fixed height so it fits within the viewport. So what we're going to do is consolidate these and remove the max height so everything including the header is on one page that's easy to scroll and move around on. Okay, now that that's out of the way, we have our starting point that I've redrawn in Sketch. Now the first thing we're going to take a look at is the background campus photos. Right now they're a bit overwhelming and distracting, especially on the plan details chart. So we're going to go ahead and remove it from that section, but we want to keep the photo on the header as it adds a bit of personality to the page. And I think it's sort of nice to show the school of the page you're on, but we want to give it a bit of a treatment so the foreground elements have a higher contrast against it. So one thing I like to do when working with background photos like this is to desaturate them and overlay a bold color using the multiply blending mode. In this case, I'm going to use the school's primary color red. Now, normally I would apply this treatment in the graphical editing software, as you can see me doing here in Sketch, and then export it. But you can also achieve this with CSS. I made a code pen of this and provided the link in the description so you can check that out. Now, because we no longer have the scroll jacking between the header and the plan details, I'm just going to tighten things up a bit. And this is nice because it pushes the tabs above the fold. And because we did that, this colorful navigation on the right is a bit repetitive and unnecessary. So let's go ahead and remove it as it's taking focus away from some of the other items in the header. Okay, let's take a look at the hierarchy. So right now the page title is tucked away in the top right corner and the company logo is down here with all the other items, which seems reversed since the company is a parent to the school selection. So we're gonna restructure these so the logo is in the top bar and the page title is below it. But before we do that, we're going to make the top bar white and invert the other items since the logo only really works well on a white background. And we're just gonna add the page title here, making it large and clear with 30 pixel text. And we're just gonna continue to tighten things up as we work here. Okay, let's take a closer look at these cards with the gray shim. If you take a closer look at these cards, you'll see that they fit into two groupings, the opt-in and opt-out options, and the quick links that navigate to the sections you can find in your space. And it's important to distinguish the two because one is far more important than the other, which is the opt-in and opt-out options, as these are counting down the days until you can make any changes. In fact, these are so important that on the current design, you can see them on every page when you scroll on the bottom right corner. So we're going to rearrange these in such a way that puts emphasis on the opt-in and opt-out options, but also position them so they can remain on the viewport as the user scrolls, so it can always be taken in at a glance. In order to do that, we're going to consolidate this section by giving it a single dark shim. In this case, I'm going to use black with the opacity reduced to 60% and create two rows within it. The first row is going to be all of the quick links and we're going to de-emphasize them by removing the icons and making them regular style smaller text. And the second row separated by a border is going to be for the opt-in and opt-out options. And this row is going to be a bit taller to support both the label and the amount of days left. And this alone does the job at putting emphasis on these options. But in addition to that, to highlight these items a bit more, we're not going to remove the icons. Now, here's a quick tip when working with icon sets like this. Icons like these with not an incredible amount of detail are designed for smaller uses like in-app experiences, not blown up for larger sizes. So instead of blowing the size up, as you see here, we're going to keep them the regular size and contain them within a circle to make them feel bigger. We're also going to update the icons. Currently, this site is using Font Awesome, which is a great set, but probably the most adopted set by developers. So we're gonna try something a little more unique. I'm gonna use my go-to set, Heroicons UI, which you can get for free on my website, steveshoger.com. 
Other great alternatives are in Typo or Zondicons. You can find the links for those in the description of this video. Okay, moving on. Now, these opt-in, opt-out options are both status indicators and links, but they don't really look clickable right now. So we're gonna add an arrow icon to the right to make them look a little bit more like clickable targets. And all of these changes make quite a huge impact because not only does it make this information much more scannable, but it also makes it much more condensed, moving our plain details way above the fold, eliminating heavy scrolling. And now that we have this global status indicator that scrolls with the page, we can remove them from the bottom right. Additionally, we can now remove the chat bar on the left side and keep it static on the right like it is in the header on the current design. Okay, before we move on, I just want to take a look at the top navigation. Earlier, we identified that the placement of the logo and the page title was a bit confusing, so we flipped them. But in addition to the placement of the logo and page title being a bit confusing, this top navigation is having a similar problem as the plan details and your space links are actually children to the school selection. But because they're above our page title on the same row as the company logo, they feel like they're global links. So we're gonna move the plan details so it is included in the first row navigation. And as for this your space link, we're going to remove that altogether because these quick links already take you to that page. These are just more popular sections. And since this navigation currently doesn't contain all the items on this page, we're going to add a more button that will be a drop down to quickly get to those other sections. Let's move on to the plan details. Now, when I removed the background campus photo earlier, it also took away the boundaries of this chart because the chart background had a white shim. And the boundaries were nice for keeping this busy table contained. So we're gonna make the background off white and give the chart a subtle box shadow to reintroduce the boundaries. Okay, let's talk about these tabs. Currently, the rainbow of colors make it hard to tell what tab is currently selected. So we're only going to show the tab on the selected item. And the bold color draws a little too much attention, taking focus away from the chart. But Jonathan did mention to me that he likes the way the colors add a touch of playfulness that speaks to the target audience. So we're going to make it just a small hint at the top of the selected tab. Let's organize this chart now. First, let's remove this help text as it's irrelevant now that we've removed the fixed height. We're also going to reduce the size of the titles as they're a bit excessive. The goal of this chart is to make it easy for students to scan and compare plans. But at the moment, it's a bit tricky to scan for a few reasons. One is that the comparable plan details are not guaranteed to line up. On some of these views, each column is independent. So when a larger point wraps on one column, it doesn't on the others, and it may throw everything off. So to fix that, we're going to make this chart into a table with borders, giving each point its own cell. And unlike the current design, we're going to give everything much more room to breathe by introducing liberal padding on the table rows. In this case, one cell has a height of about 60 pixels. Okay, so that helps a bit, but this is still looking pretty busy because there's just so much text on these points. And that's mainly because each value includes a label beside it. This is also repetitive because every column being compared includes the same label. This is a common mistake I see on pricing sections of websites. So instead of repeating the label in every column, we're going to add an additional column to house just the label, enabling us to remove it from each point. But before we do that, we need to figure out what we can do with the column containing the section titles as it's currently interfering. So what we're gonna do is create another row for these titles. And to make it clear that these are section titles, we're going to void the horizontal borders and give it a subtle gray background. And just for a little more distinction, we're not going to make them as tall. And now we can use this column for all of the labels. Finally, I'm going to reduce the font size and the max width of this table so it shares the same width as the header section. Now, it's not immediately clear how you select the plan. It turns out that you need to click this opt-in button and it will show this same view in an overlay, which seems a bit repetitive. So we're going to include the plan selection in this view at the top. Okay, last but not least, let's talk about the font. The font currently being used is Leto, which is a great Google font, but we wanna find one that is not as widely used and use one that we can attach better to the brand. So let's take a closer look at the logo here. 
As you can see, it has a bit of a playful look with its slightly rounded edges and all of the colors being used. So we want to try and find a font that shares a similar personality, but still very clean and legible. So let's head over to Typekit and narrow down our results using the sidebar options. When I'm looking for a good UI font, I always start by selecting a sans serif font that's suitable for paragraphs. Nothing too heavy or too thick and nothing too narrow or too wide. Now I read somewhere that a large X height is more legible on screen, so we're gonna select that. And I like to use somewhat geometric shapes. And these properties give us a nice small set of pretty good options. So let's find something with the playful personality we're looking for. Now, a favorite font of mine that has some of these characteristics is Museo Sans. It's playful, but still manages to look professional and has a ton of different weights. So let's apply that to the design. Now, fonts are not necessarily transferable, so we're going to have to adjust the size and weights a bit. I know Museo Sans tends to be a bit heavier than most fonts, so we're going to make a few adjustments. And that pretty much wraps everything up. Okay, now a few people have asked me to address mobile in these videos. And because the target audience for this application is students, I felt it would be a great place to start. So I'm just going to share a few opinions on the subject and how I would make this design responsive. Now, there's no one size fits all way of doing this. So we're gonna have to consider a few options and weigh them against each other. Okay, so for the header, I decided to move the about us and social links to the bottom of the page. Students who come to this page are far more interested in the plan details than learning about the company and its social media presence. It's okay on the desktop view because we have the real estate, but on mobile, it's just not necessary. And to keep the page header condensed, I put the page navigation in a expand collapse menu and restructured the status indicators so that the text is below the icons like on the current design. Let's make our way to the table now. So for the top tabs, we could either contain all of the options in a dropdown or make each section an accordion. Both have their pros and cons. A dropdown keeps things nice and condensed, but accordions are easier to use. In this case, I think the accordion makes a bit more sense as the tables are quite long on mobile and it might be frustrating to continually scroll back up to the top. Now let's look at the table view. Tables are really tricky on mobile. We're definitely not going to be able to fit everything in a single view, so our goal is less about making it scannable and more about being able to move around efficiently. Now, I did some digging around and found a few examples with similar table treatments. For example, Shopify's pricing page uses tabs at the top to change the views, but for our example, I felt it would interfere with the current tabs, making it confusing. Another option is Slack's pricing page. They use the approach of stacking every column but I thought that would lead to excessive scrolling for this example because there's just so many plan details. So I thought for this site, as boring as this solution may be, is to just give the table horizontal scrolling. This is actually what the bootstrap framework tables do by default. Now, when implementing a solution like this, try to provide hints that you can scroll horizontally. You can do this by fading the text a bit or cutting it off at an ideal spot. Now, I think this is off to a good start, but this is something I would probably want to build a prototype of just to see how it feels when using it. Now, I wanna bring up one more option that some people may find a little bit controversial. Jeffrey Wei recently tweeted, sometimes I visit a website on my phone that hasn't been optimized visually for mobile. It's a zoomed out desktop view. And I think to myself, eh, I actually prefer this. And I couldn't agree more. Again, it's important to consider a variety of options and pick the one that works best for your design problem. And that pretty much covers everything. So let's compare our new design with the one we started with. Now, if you enjoyed the tips in this video, be sure to check out my Twitter page at Steve Shoger, where I regularly share practical tips that you can apply to your own design. And if you want to see the sketch files to the design in the video, I've included a link to download the sketch files in the description. And if you enjoyed this video and want to receive updates when more content like this is published, be sure to sign up at refactoringui.com.